So just a few days ago, Asus unveiled the C425 Chromebook and kind of out of nowhere gave us a sequel to the 434. And if you're not familiar with it, we'll link it in the description below. We've done a review and all kinds of other videos on that device. And it's become one of the most popular Chromebooks available. And it's a fantastic one. It has a lot of great features. So what's new in this 425? Well, the listing was a little confusing. The pricing's a little confusing too. So we just ordered one so that we can unbox it and take a look. Before we get in the box, today's video is brought to you by NordVPN. They're the VPN of choice for millions of customers because they're awesome at what they do. And that is keep you safe and secure when you are browsing the internet, whether you're at home or on the go, in your favorite browser of choice, on your device of choice. All you need to do to find out more about their services is go to chromanbox.com forward slash NordVPN. All right, so let's get into it. I mean, we're looking at a basic Asus Chromebook box here. They don't really have any surprises in them anymore at this point. Um, well, as soon as I say that, this is a little bit of a surprise. A lot of Asus devices come basically with a block that has the, the plug on it. And while that's handy to put in your bag, it's kind of annoying actually to try to plug into stuff because it usually takes up like two slots on the wall or two slots in your power search. So uh, it's nice to have kind of a two piece cable, a little more clunky, uh, but just depending on your use case, it can actually be a little bit more helpful. Uh, we'll get the Chromebook out of the way here and yeah, your basic stuff, a couple pieces of paper in the box, nothing real exciting there, but honestly, you guys came here for the Chromebook anyway, right? And right out of the box, I mean, this thing bears tons of resemblance to the C434 and that's not surprising. That honestly is the reason we bought it and a reason why we're a little bit, I don't know, just, uh, curious in general about this device because if it were just a variant of the c434 no big deal we would just say hey look a new variant's come out with you know some new specs but this thing changes a few things in the formula of the c434 and so it has a different model completely and we just want to kind of look at it and obviously put it under a normal review process all right so looking just at the outside of the device in general, again, striking similarity to the 434, but I can tell you right off the bat, plastic bottom here. So the 434 is all aluminum. And one thing we need to talk about in general is there are so many similarities between this device and the 434 that it's going to bear repeating throughout the entire time, both in this unboxing and in the review process, because Asus has priced this thing MSRP at $499. And right now you can buy the 434, the one that we reviewed for $499. So you need to really think through that if you're looking at purchasing either one of these devices and you can get the one with eight gigs of RAM internally, the 434 specifically, for $559, I believe right now. So we're already starting to see some deals on that. We'll probably end up seeing deals on this too. And we'll talk about that here in just a second. But overall, I mean, outside again, if you like the look of the 434, you're gonna like the look of this one. It almost looks completely identical. All right, so let's crack it open and see what we got inside. And you know, not surprisingly, we're looking at the same 16 by nine screen, nice thin bezels, but Right off the bat, I can tell you that the base of this thing is plastic. It is not aluminum. So now we've got an underside that's plastic. We've got the keyboard deck is plastic. So the entire bottom half of this device is made out of plastic. It looks great and it actually doesn't feel bad or anything. It's just plastic and you need to know that when comparing it again to the C434. Keyboard feels identical to the C434, which is to say it's fantastic. I mean, click is great, key travel's great. A lot of people got really upset about the way the backlighting works on this. During the daytime, you just gotta turn the backlight off, key, and then the, the letters are perfectly legible, no problem. Uh, when it gets darker, that's when you wanna bring that backlighting up. You do get a much bigger trackpad here. It feels like the same surface, so that is to say it's okay, it's usable, it's fine. Uh, it's much larger here, but it's the same kind of uh, plasticky surface that the 434 has, which led me to have an okay experience with the trackpad. Click mechanism feels really good and it's nice and quiet. So all of that checks out, it's very nice. Again, the thin bezels and the screen look amazing on this Chromebook, but with this one, instead of having an all glass panel over top, you've got an anti-glare finish on the screen and you have a plastic surround actually around the screen and there's no touch capability here to speak of. So you're losing touch and from what I can tell looking at the screen, you're losing some brightness too. The original C434 comes in just shy of 300 nits. This device, if I'm guessing, we'll talk about this specifically in the review, but 
looks like it's on par with some of these Chromebooks we've seen here lately. So I'm going to guess somewhere between the 170 to 180, somewhere in that range. So yeah, you're getting anti-glare, but you're losing some of that screen brightness as well. Around the sides of the device, we've got the same port selection as the 434 had. So that's to say a USB-A, two USB type C's, micro SD card slot, headphone, microphone jack, and the Kensington lock port. We haven't tested the speakers on this, obviously, because I'm just sitting here messing with it right now, but um, I would assume the same speakers are along for the ride, and those speakers in the 434 were good. So we're putting together a decent package here, and internally we're talking Core M3, eight gigs of RAM, 64 gigs of internal storage. So there's a lot to like here, and I, I think this is gonna be a, a good performing Chromebook. I don't think there's anything necessarily really wrong with it. The question becomes price. Is it really going to be worth the price ASUS is asking for it? And until we review it, I can't really answer that just yet. Just know that compared to the 434 that actually comes with a few more perks, it's not that much cheaper at this point. And I think probably ASUS has put this device out in order to just mark it down. Matter of fact, it went on sale 25 bucks off within a few days of it launching. So we're gonna spend time with it. We're gonna review this device. We're gonna do all the same things we normally do with it. But if you're looking at it and thinking about, uh, is this device for me? Uh, you might wanna stick around and wait for us to spend a little bit more time with it to tell you whether you need to get this or the 434. But guys, that's it for this one. If you liked it, give it a thumbs up, hit the subscribe button down below, and make sure and hit the notification bell so you can be alerted when we put out the review of this device so that you can decide if this is the right one for you. But until next time, we'll see you.